Richard. 20 years ago, Jerry and the Pacemakers rousing You'll Never Walk Alone was the country's top-selling disc for 19 weeks. It became the soccer supporters' hymn, and it doesn't seem to matter whether their team is winning or losing. And now, what about this? I want to be Bobby's girl. Of Susan Morm doing more for the egos of people Chris and Robert than ever that fellow Bruce and his spider ever did. And that record held the number three spot for 19 weeks too. Our third guest today had no fewer than eight records in the charts in the early 1960s. He's the lad from Sheffield, Dave Berry, who made such hits as The Crying Game, Little Things and Mama. Well, Jerry, those really were the heady days, weren't they, the 60s? <clears throat> Great for man, yes, it was good fun. We all... Um... We met around the same, same time, 62, 63, and it was great for me. We had a lot of laughs. It was really good. But Jerry and the Pacemakers' success was phenomenal, wasn't it? Because both, all three of your, your first three singles all went to number one, didn't they? Mm-hmm. And that, that was even better than Elvis, the Beatles, or anybody. Yes, but I didn't have the money that they had. <laughs> Just a little bit of success. I'm not annoyed or nothing. <laughs> um, yeah, it was lucky. It's a nice thing to have. Um, David was very lucky, he had lots of hits. Very good lad, David. You, you were actually, you, you were actually though, the first Merseyside group, though, to get to number one as well, weren't you, more important? Yes, I probably. believe. I, I didn't think of it, but, uh, <clears throat> excuse me, a guy told me six months ago that the Beats got to number two with Please Please Me. I thought that went to number one. Mm, yes. So, uh, so, in fact, you led the Mersey sound, really? Yeah, but I've still got no one to eat that bit. Oh, Jay. Sure, that was good. Oh. <laughs> you don't look all that hard up, Jerry. <laughs> You don't look that oh, hard, sorry, up. No, I, I don't feel it really. <laughs> <laughs> what were those days like in the early days of uh, the, the groups when they got together in Liverpool? Did you really expect it to take off like it did? No, not at all. We, we did it for fun, actually. Uh, there was nothing else to do in Liverpool. And we just formed lots of bands. And uh, it was a great time. I think it was harder when we actually made the records and started doing touring, which Susan or Dave will tell you, was really hard work. You, you grafted, you didn't know where you were. And it was heavy. It was more fun in the early days before we actually made the records. With You'll Never Walk Alone, though, as that was sort of an, an old favourite. I mean, that was the mums and the dads' favourite, wasn't mm. it? Did you ever expect that to be such a success? Well, we... I went to see Carousel as a kid, and I loved the scene in it when they, when they did Walk Alone, so I put it in the act with the band. And then when we made our first LP, we put on the LP. And then I liked it so much that we decided to make it our third record. We were aiming for nothing, it was just a lovely song. And luckily it went to number one and uh, the football club sang it. It was nothing, there was no great deep thinking in it. I just liked the way it sounded on record. Mm. And we put it out. Yeah. Now then, Bobby's Girl, that was another sort of monster hit, wasn't it? Yeah. And then people, people still remember you for that song, don't they? It's instantly recognisable. I get billed, when, when I, even when I, I perform, you know, now. It's like Susan Moore, Bobby's Girl. It, it's a tag that will probably follow me to the grave. It'll be on my tombstone, I think. <laughs> who was but Bobby? Who was Bobby? I've never found one yet, you know. They're all shy when it comes to it, Marilyn. Yeah. They're all talkers, you know, Jerry's. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> but no, I haven't found a Bobby yet, you know, it's true. But that was uh, that was the uh, the swinging sixties, wasn't it? Oh, when very liberation much was so. beginning. Yet, yet Bobby's girl is, is very much anti that, isn't it? It's I want to be Bobby's girl, you know. It isn't well, it? the lyric was very teeny bopper. It was very teenage mm. at the time. I I think analysing the lyric without getting too technical, folks. It was of, of a, a girl still at school, and you know when you ask a child, and I have a ten year old son, and say, so, well, what do you want to be when you grow up? And that was the lyric of Bobby's Girl, mm. asking a girl, what do you want to be? Oh, I want to be Bobby's Girl, because she was in love with a, mm. a, a, a lad called Bobby. I have. And he wants to be Bobby's oh, Girl. Oh, no. you got problems in your <laughs> son. Well, Jerry was saying it was, a, it was a tough life, though, when you when you were on the road. And what about uh, as a girl? I mean, there were all these It was around. very, very weird and very heavy going. I remember doing a six-week tour in, in 1962. Mm. That was when Bobby's Girl was released. That's true. Mm. Uh, and we did... Seven, no, six weeks, seven shows a week, two shows a night. So that was 40, uh, six, seven, 42 shows. And you didn't know, in a different town every night. 
you didn't know where you were, where you were going, where you'd been. It was just like you hit the road. You did the shows and you did. And I was the only girl. Can you imagine this? You I mean, I should, be, I should be so lucky now. <laughs> you had a great time. I was the only girl. And there were all, there was Joe Brown and the brothers and all the lovely Shane Fenton and the Fentons, who's now our Alvin Stardust. And all these tornadoes, of course, from St Telstar, Jerry. Yeah. And it was wonderful. But of course, I was very young and innocent. I didn't appreciate my good luck in those days. Oh. <laughs> was it, as a girl, though, and touring around all these groups, was it, was it quite lonely at times? Though? Oh, yes. Yes, very much so. I mean, joking apart, I mean, it, now I, I'd have a, whoa, what a fantastic time. But it was, it was very lonely. So and what is it that makes you carry on then? I mean, if you're sort of in a strange town, you're thoroughly miserable. It's the business. It's yeah. like, uh, it's like you walk into, or you drive into Leeds, as I, I did last week, and I go into the hotel and uh, into reception, and I look across, and there is Roy Hudd, for example, who was appearing in, in Oliver at the theatre there. And it's like meeting Jerry again. It's like meeting Dave. It's the, hi, how are you? We're still here. Yeah. And isn't life wonderful? Dave, what do you remember of the 60s? When, when you look back, what, what sort of stands out in your memory? Well, I remember that it was uh, a very good time for music because uh, there were sort of good bands in Liverpool and good bands in Sheffield and also London and Newcastle. And it was sort of a coming together of uh, all the different bands playing sort of rhythm and blues music and blues music. Mm -hmm. And we were all playing uh, the same sort of music in, in different cities for maybe one or two years before 1963. Mm, your, your, uh, your sort of songs were slightly more gentle, weren't they, than the, than the sort of Beatles and the rock and roll and that sort of thing? Yeah, my songs in the charts were, but yeah. my stage act was always sort of more based on blues and rhythm and blues. Yeah. And the first tours were great because, I mean, I think my first tours were the Rolling Stones and the Ronettes. So I was more onto the, the rock and roll side of uh, the music, as I still am now. You know, I'm still very interested in the, uh, the blues people and the rhythm and blues and the new bands. I think the most important thing that's come from the 60s has been, uh, I didn't think the 70s were very exciting, mm -hmm. but I think the 80s are very similar to the 60s in many respects, mm -hmm. with the new musicians. Mm -hmm. sure. There's some great bands playing now, and uh, <coughs> I make a point of seeing as many as I can. I think there's some great musicians around now. Who in the 60s were sort of your musical heroes? Yeah. Uh, in the 60s? Uh, not many of the British bands, really. Mm -hmm. I, I liked, uh, I always liked Bob Dylan and uh, I, I always still like Chuck Berry, mm. and uh, the early animal stuff I like, but the, the sort of rougher stuff, you know, the Rolling Stones I liked. I was never a smooth, uh, a smooth, uh, smoother really. You know? yeah. but, <laughs> <laughs> but this is the thing, wasn't it, in the 60s, when, when the Beatles first came on the scene, everybody said, what a scruffy lot, you know, and the hair, but now you look at them and they look so neat and tidy, yes, don't they? They were, with the, the suits. I remember doing the Royal Variety Show in 63 with them, and they were the hit of the show because uh, I think it was John mm. uh, Lennon said, uh, now I want you all to, uh, to clap along with this next number and you people down in the store as well, just rattle your jewellery. I mean, it was like, <laughs> hey, the, 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 the whole, oh, that's right, that's yes, right. The, the whole, uh, the whole theatre erupted. Mm. The it church, was, it was the yeah. basic, the, the nerve of, of having dared to say that, which was great, great fun. Mm. The tours were, the, were, were actually really good fun because uh, none of us had really been on the road before. And we were still coming in on to the, the end of the sort of variety and everything had to be run as a sort of a, a correct show, which mm -hmm. is fine. Uh, but none of the bands had been on the road before. It was just absolute lunacy, you know, drinking and falling around and not following any, any patterns of... Uh, and a lot of the tour managers, maybe you can remember people like, I think his name was Fred Perry, was a tour manager. And he used to be sort of going crazy backstage because... Uh, and we, lots of the bands would be banned from going in the stage area mm -hmm. while the other acts were on because... Uh, you know, to get things thrown did, at did them. Did people set out to be rebels, or was it just that, as you say, they weren't used to this sort of We were not used to it. We'd, we'd yeah. all sort of came from our respective towns and cities and played in and around those areas for maybe a year or two, and then we suddenly were, we were touring all over Europe and all over England. Yeah. And but so it was just, just uh, lunacy. You know, we went into hotels and we'd never really stayed in hotels before. Yeah. It, it was a place. whole revolution <laughs> of fashion and, and like the Beatles, I mean, we, we think, oh, oh, goodness, but they were in nice suits and with their, 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 their haircuts, yes, but it was a fashion yes. revolution. That's right, when we look back at, the, you know, the Jerry and the Pacemakers, I mean, you all looked frightfully neat these days. Yes. But uh, did you think of yourselves as rebels at the time? No, I don't think so. I agree with David, it was a thing that just happened. You didn't set out to be anything, but as Dave said, you never taught, so once you sort of went around the country, and got this response off the audience, you thought, bloody hell, what's happening here? And what, you was it, what was it like to be treated as superstars? Well, you, you never thought about it, Marilyn. You never thought that just things happened and occurred. 
you go to the hotel and there'd be thousands of kids outside the hotel. And you think, oh, what's all this about? It, you just never actually thought you were a superstar or anything. It was just a very a strange thing that occurred. And as David said, you would drink and maybe have a party because you'd never got into that scene before. And then the paper said, the group wrecked the hotel. It didn't really. Just one of the guys might have fallen over and all dropped himself at the window. 87 <laughs> floor. Shot himself. <laughs> Shot himself. <laughs> Did you say? You give me a fright then, David. Don't so. Uh, it did it's go Sheffield. to some people's heads, though, didn't it? All this sudden fame and glory. Sadly, yes. Mm. Um, and you look back and you feel very sad for the people that you knew that who it did occur to, who did go a bit over the top. Um, There's two ways you, you can still go. Still love them, yeah, exactly. Yeah. There's two ways you can go in music. You either sort of work it out and find out after two or three years how you're going to handle your career mm. as a business. As a business. Mm. Or if you can't handle that then that's when they, you, you start on right. the drugs and the drink and uh, everything falls apart. Well, of course, the fame generated by hits in Britain often led to invitations to appear in the United States in television and film spectaculars. Now, we've got a clip here from one such spectacular of 1964 called Teenage Command Performance. Here's how Jerry wowed them in the States. <laughs> The back of the dancing and sort of disappearing off the stage. Well, of course, there was all the hand jive well, and everything. Well, the audience yeah. leaving. <laughs> <laughs> You're going to be very annoyed. But, you know, we all had this fun. You know, this is what was it. Great it we were all really experiencing a, a great fun era. But that must have been mind-blowing, wasn't it, Jerry? Going over there, and I mean, we didn't see the audience, but it sounded as if there were thousands upon thousands of them there. Yeah, it was strange. We did, our first sort of feeling, we went to Chicago first <clears throat> and played McCall McCall. And we didn't really know, we thought it was just like a little hall. There was like 27,000 kids Jeez. in, and the stage literally came up from the floor, and you started playing. And the stage came up, and the guy said, and Jerry, in the pace space, <laughs> we came up, I thought, Jesus Christ, I couldn't believe it. We did the show, I didn't hear anything. I was deaf for like two hours. But it was just amazing, it really was a, a frightening thing, really. How did the Americans treat you? Did they, they would, treat you as... As, as stars coming over from England, or were they saying, who are these guys? Oh, no, they were great. They were really nice. I mean, luckily, the Beats went there first and made it, so we were following in the Beatles' footsteps. Mm. So they'd already set the pattern of English bands, and they were great. They were really nice, very polite, and the kids were tremendous. You did quite a lot of touring abroad as well, didn't you, Susan? Went over yes, I, I uh, did ma ma mainly cabaret. I didn't do the, the big concert halls now because you... I didn't have a group, you see, like, yes. like Jerry. Now you talk about that. sort of looking back at sort of old films, embarrassing photos. Oh, We've got one uh, here what? of you, Susan. I think it's when you came back from uh, South Africa tour. There you are, you know, that's a real sort of star thing, isn't it? You Wait, did I get and... that hat? Where did I get that hat? Way <laughs> in a fur coat. Yet. Yes, oh, wonderful. Absolutely. Now wonderful. it looks there as if you sort of uh, left South Africa in your straw hat and your summer clothes and then you get back to chilly old Britain again. I wonder what I had on. No, that. she left. Maybe with I had a nothing on. Maybe I had nothing on to that fur coat. Oh, well, there, there we too. are. There's the glamour. Oh, one. what? Where did you get look that? Look at that. Oh, look at the hair. I like your hand. Black, black, black. Oh, yes. Mm, oh, wonderful. 
Oh. No, there, there, were, there, were, there were, you say you were on tour, you were the only girl on tour, but there were one or two girls around at that time making oh, a big name yes. for themselves, oh, weren't yes, there? Yes, indeed. Well, Scylla Scylla, of course, yes. Scylla. Uh, Kathy Helen. Kirby, Helen, of course, Helen, yes. yes. Shapiro. Wonderful. Yes, Dusty, Dusty Springfield. Springfield. Of Come on, yes. <coughs> Big, big lady. Rusty Springboard. Yeah, <laughs> wonderful. We took an Australia oh, with Rusty, you know. Yeah. Amazing lady. Wonderful. She, she lives in LA now, doesn't she? So I think she's moved back here. Has she? Oh, but big, big stars, oh yes. Yeah, I mean, well, Dusty Springfield must have been quite a big star when you were sort of At just... At the same time, to... we used to record yes. in the same studio, Philip Stewart. Yeah. How did you all get on together? Uh, very well. We used to do the Thank You Lucky Stars and the Jukebox Juries and they were great was, shows. Yeah, they were fantastic shows. I mean, it did sound as if you all got along very well together, but there must have been sort of rivalries and jealousies, weren't there? Who was top of the pops and that sort of thing? Uh, I, don't know. I don't think so. No, no. I didn't experience Not it at anyway. No. I had it many times, yeah. actually. Did you, yeah. Dave? They're smoothing it all out yeah. too much. Oh, yeah. come on, well, tell us about there it. Was, there was lots of sort of. Uh, people pulling big moodies mm. on, uh, on the shows. Uh, well, it was what we were talking about before, yeah, wasn't it, about some people really letting people go to their heads? People would say that they, you know, that was their set. They'd set out their sort of eight numbers. And uh, if someone further down the bill had included one of those songs in mm. his set, then mm. there'd be a sort of a, a big well, moody pull and people would, yeah, still sure. would have to change. Yeah, so there was, there was a bit it of created, temperament yeah, around. Yeah, oh, yes. of course, I think with any artist, yes. there's forced to be sort of egos and temperament and, uh, and problems. I don't think it was... Uh, the sixties was great, but it's not so uh, smooth and sort of fabulous, and everyone didn't sort of walk around saying like, "This is the sixties, we're having a marvelous time." All the time, it was a nice I time did. to be involved so yeah. in, I in did. music, but uh, it was hard work. Yeah, it was hard work. It's not uh, mm. not so clean and, uh, and lovely as everyone imagined it would be. Yeah, I disagree. Do I really do. Yeah. We had a great time. Honestly, everybody I met in the business around the time, Dave, including you. Were great. Yeah. We had oh, the yeah, I agree. Rules. But and there, when it there comes wasn't to girls, there was, there was no, I, I, no animosity whatsoever. The shows I did with, with the other girls, uh, you know, you think, oh, you cats, 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 cats. Mm. never. Mm. No. But I, I think it's because, well, I had Bobby's girl, Dusty had, I mean, I, mm. I was lucky, I, I had one hit, but I mean, Dusty and Scylla had mm -hmm. several hits, but I was never jealous of them. Mm. It was, hey, you know, we're all oh, in it together. I think we've got some more photographs coming up as well. Who were you? Yeah. Uh, who have we got this? Oh, yes. Now then, you're talking oh, about Scylla. Oh, there's Scylla. Scylla. Wonderful. Yeah, I'd love with the gold dust. Oh, Billy J. Billy J. Yeah, yeah. yeah. God bless you. That's yes, now, he is. Uh, I mean, as you say, you, you meet up with all these people these days mm. as well, do you? Certainly yeah, we'll say, hey, yeah. what are you having to drink? Pants, you know, pants again. Those look Pass like golden and discs, and though. Not the things that I'll give it to Oh. Those, those looked like gold discs on that yes, uh, on that photograph. I think they might have been. Yes. What else have we got? We've got some more photographs as well, I think, coming up, haven't we? Yes. Oh, oh there look at Dave. Oh, Back before I had my teeth in. A child bride <laughs> with a gummy mouth. <laughs> <laughs> of course, you used to sort of you used to do a lot of slinking about the stage, didn't you? Yes, actually, I'm smiling too much now. I should be more, in, more yes. in image. I should be more in character now. That's right, the moody look. Yes, I'm sorry. He I'm wasn't slinking; he was yeah. drunk. Yeah, well, that was again. Uh, Here we are. Look, I've, we I've always felt that uh, visual. You know, I've always <laughs> been into visual things on, yeah. in performances, and mm. uh, I think it's very important to have sort of a, an act which is an hour of sort of visuals and mm. and music. So that's where my sort of act started from, and sort of little bits of Gene Vincent and watching uh, theatre and watching different things in the mm. theatre. Mm. I think right, Dave actually is act, is what the kids of today are doing. It's more of a variety show that the kids put on the bands. But Dave was doing that in the 60s. I've Do always really? believed in the importance yeah. of lights. I think mm. I was using uh, lighting people way back. Uh, instead of just going on, on the theatre and just leaving it to the lighting guy, I would have someone with me whose sole job mm. was to do the lights, mm. which was quite unheard of, really, for a band to have someone travelling just for the lights. Well, now, of course, it's... And now huge. there's sort of 20 people doing the lights, but at that time, mm. 64, 65. And we used to work very hard at it and uh, make sure that the, the lights were correct. What do you think about, then, all the, all the organisation that goes behind everything these days? Do you think it's probably taken lot of the fun out of it? Uh, not really, no. I think it's made... Uh, I mean, music and, and entertainment is for the audience, mm. basically. And it's all added. Uh, all the videos and the effects and everything can only add for the audience's uh, enjoyment. You're I mean, obviously the perfectionist, aren't you? You like well, to I love everything it. just right. Yeah, just I like right. everything, yeah. you know, you lights see. and everything. I, I do love, uh, oh, love theatre and, the and, and rock shows. Yeah. I mean, I spend lots of my time watching uh, all the new bands and I'm sat there and rock and roll, I, I can still get the tingle, you know, yeah. when you first hear your first record when you're 14 and 15, you get that tingle. Yeah. Well, I can still get that now by going and seeing... Uh, I don't know, ABC, Spandau Ballet, for the pop bands and people like that. Right, well, what, do you, what about you two? What do you think about the new groups? Excellent. Fantastic. Mm. Police are my favourite. 
Yeah, well, there's My so many good ones. Are. Yes. And the, yes. the good thing is the kids are talented. They're not just playing rubbish, they're playing good gear, lots of talent in it. I was converted by a fellow called um, Alice Cooper in, a, in Perth three years ago. I saw him do a show called Welcome to My Nightmare. Is that the guy with all the makeup? Yeah. Yeah. Oh. yeah. Out of this world. The greatest show I've ever seen in my life. And it made me think this is what it's all about, the new things that were happening. And the kids of today have taken it. But apart from a great visual show, they're great musicians and playing lovely gear. I think it's brilliant. I really do. It's what they've said before. The 80s is more like the 60s than the 70s. 70s were a little bit flabby and washy. The bands of the 80s are really getting it together. And I think they're superb. I really do. Do you think they're enjoying they're themselves, themselves as much as you obviously did, though? Of course they're enjoying themselves as much. They've got to because they show it on stage. They're putting more into it than we ever did or ever thought we could do. Yeah, but hold on, Jerry. Well, they, they have echo systems. They have uh, lighting. They have much more than we did in the oh, 60s. Same. I mean, I used to go on sometimes and sing with organ and drums. And, and, you know, with a, a mic with, with no uh, echo or anything. And that was only last week. <laughs> 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 but, yeah. but uh, they have, the groups and the, the, the singers have so much now that it's not <clears throat> how you perform, it's what, in a recording studio in particular, also, it's what you do with the knobs. But the, but <laughs> uh, <laughs> in, our day, <laughs> in our day. But seriously, folks, no, isn't it? I mean, yep. basically in the 60s, we used to go on and, uh, with your group. Yeah, but that, that was, was the it. sound of the 60s. Today's sound is the sound of the 80s. Oh, we yeah, didn't yeah, want yeah, any more. Talking the about lights. that sort of going full circle, I mean, the, you and the pacemakers split mm -hmm. up, what, 67, wasn't it? Yes. Why, why did you decide to go solo at that time? I went into Charlie Earl in the West End. Yes. Into acting and sort of... Yes. Dance. Be it the the best. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I see. Just I wanted to get in the West End and yeah. the offer came up and I did it. And now you've gone full circle, and yes. you've got Jerry and the pacemakers again. Now With an organ. <laughs> <laughs> organ and drums. And a load yes. of knobs. I love them. <laughs> and, and what have you been doing, Susan? I mean, do you, have you stayed with cabaret? And that's yes, I have not so much cabaret now. I, I very much into theatre. Mm. Um, and uh, Sunday concerts, and, and I, I still enjoy it. That's why I, mm -hmm. I hopefully, as, soon, as long as my agent rings and says, well, you do, will you do a gig on Sunday down? I say, yes, and I get in my car, and I, I still love it. You do? I love you the don't business. sort of uh, wish you that you could just sort of stay at home and no. sort of be... No, no. Yeah. <gasps> Isn't that awful? No, yeah. I enjoy singing. I enjoy the business. I enjoy meeting Jerry and Dave and yourself. I, I love the whole Marilyn. I, ho I love the whole bit that goes with it. How often do you all meet up, though? Well, sadly, not enough. Um, last time I saw Sue was in Brighton. We were doing a show and Susan came in. But I hadn't seen her for years before that. It, but the beauty is, Marilyn, that you may not see somebody like for 15 years or 20 years. And when you see them and chat, the time has not gone. It's as though you were with them yesterday, chatting. Mm. And that's what I was saying that at the time. We were so many good friends around. And it's great. It can be 20 years, 15 years. But when you meet them again, it's the chatting. And, and, no, then you're back and in nobody this. expected you all to have lasted so long, did they? In the well, 60s, especially. they always thought, right, it's just sort of, what, five-minute five wonder. Well, and, we thought that, and yes. Then I mean, we thought it yeah. really did. Four or five yeah. years yes. would be... Yeah. It, was just, it was just a hobby, really. Mm. But talking back again to what Jerry just said now, the nice thing about the 60s, uh, a lot of the comedians now started in bands. That's so right. Of Russ mm. Abbott... Freddie Star. Mm. So we knew these guys when they were playing. Jimmy Tarbell. In yeah, in, in sort of like local. Yeah, come on. And so it's quite funny now. <laughs> to see oh, but... <laughs> Sorry, David. Carry on. Look. He gets annoyed when I chat. Carry on. No, it's your show. It's your show. No, go on, David. Look, now then, we don't have any temperament, do we? <laughs> <laughs> but he's right. Yeah. There are lots of comedians now. I mean, look at Dave. Yeah. Anyway, well. <laughs> But you've all survived so well. I mean, you all, you know, I mean... We're all rich. To, all rich, yes, all successful. I just thought you said you've got no money. Oh, you see, like, <laughs> he's not, he hasn't got him with him. But the people, are still, the people still come to see in the you, don't they? I mean, when you get Cliff Richard concerts, or you, Jerry and the Pacemakers, the young kids now are coming That's back to bonus, watch actually. what the kids in the 60s that did. That is the bonus, because yeah. when you do tours, and we just finished the UK tour, and it's great because you get kids, or the audience, like from 15 to 93. And even the kids of today, who maybe have been brainwashed by the parents, they want to come and see what was happening. And that is the bonus when they come after the show and say, we enjoyed it, and it's great. Do you think so, yes, Susan? Yes, it is. It's a great thing when they do that. It's so you've got this massive sort of variety of audience from the kids' mothers who are now grandmothers to the kids' children. Yeah. It's, a, it's really nice. And it's great that everybody, including you, have, have enjoyed it all. Yeah. Well, I'm afraid that that's all the time we have on Calendar Tuesday this week. So thanks to Susan Morm, Jerry Mars and Dave Berry.
and may they continue to entertain us for many more years yet. Don't forget to join us next week when our special guest will be that larger-than-life scholar, philosopher and scourge of mothers-in-law, Les Dawson. But goodbye for now. <laughs>